Can you export your log from the Parks on the Air website to Logbook of the World? How long is one POTA day exactly? SDR control for ICOM on an Apple. And should we be using power with FT8 this time on Mailbag Monday? What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another Mailbag Monday. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. We have four fantastic questions for you today, so let's dive right in. This first question comes from a viewer who says, I am lazy. Well, at least you're comfortable with yourself. And haven't been logging my SSB POTA contacts on my end. Well, is there a way to export these from POTA and upload to Logbook of the World now that I have that set up? Well, technically yes, but really no. Let's take a look. So if we go to POTA.app, we can uh, make sure you're signed in and go down to My Hunter Log. And here you can see these are all of the parks that I have hunted over the course of however long I've been hunting parks. Notice there's no place that says export this log. This is it, this is all you get. So, you get to do it the hard way. You can go through and type in every single operator. Here's the band, and here's the time, and the date. So you can go ahead and manually enter all of those into whatever logging software you use that will then upload it to Logbook of the World and uh, then you will have them uploaded to Logbook of the World. So maybe we should start actually logging our contacts because no, there is no export feature in Parks on the Air. That actually would be a really cool thing. So, POTA admins? I'm sure you have nothing better to do? Something we could look into? Asking for a friend. <laughs> so good luck uh, entering all your uh, call signs. Honestly, that's no different than the guys that paper log and then they have to go back and enter them all in the computer anyway. So. You get to do the same thing. Thanks for writing in though. Next, we got a real simple one. This guy is asking, my question is if I work a few parks on 220-23, 16 Mountain Standard Time, so 23 UTC, and then make a few more park contacts after 1701, which is one UTC or 01 UTC, would they count as the next day on POTA site? So I guess my question is, does POTA use UTC time and date? I'm working on getting my 365 days straight contact. Yes. POTA, uh, just like everything else in ham radio, goes by UTC. It doesn't go by whatever your current time is. So when you're working uh, those at 16 Mountain Standard Time and then 1701 Mountain Standard Time, you just worked two days. So uh, congratulations on, on working on getting your 365 days uh, straight, though. That's fantastic. We can't be activators without you guys as hunters. So thanks for doing that. And thanks for writing in. Next, we have a question about Max. Specifically, the SDR control for ICOM. This guy's saying, hey, I'm a Mac guy and recently upgraded to General and picked up the 7300. Congratulations. Doing some 10 meter SSB and FT8, planning to do some portable soda poto, hopefully this coming spring and summer. I'm currently running the cheapest tiny Windows laptop to run FT8 that Amazon sells on Black Friday, but I'm, but I'm a Mac guy. Any thoughts on the SDR control for ICOM software? It's 99 bucks. First off, $99 for software is a, 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 big, uh, a big ask, but... Uh, I guess the first question is, why are you using a Windows computer to run FT8? I am a Mac guy. I despise Windows. There's there's the $60 laptop right there. I only use that for portable stuff because it charges off at 12 volts and it's 60 bucks. Uh, the only time I need to use uh, a Windows computer in the ham radio universe is when I need to program my DMR radios, which is few and far between. So it doesn't you don't really need anything good. So uh, WSJTX. There's all kinds of logging softwares, grid tracker, all of that stuff is already available on Mac. So you don't need to use Windows for FT8 at all. Uh, but SDR control for ICOM is the question. So let's take a look at that. I, I'm not really familiar at it, but it is $100. It's on the Mac App Store. So let's take a look at it. And here we are, SDR control for ICOM. Now, note it's available for the ICOM 705, 7610, 9700, 7300, and 8600. There's a little bit of a caveat on the 7300, though, because that does not have uh, any kind of wireless internet connection. But uh, it does say fully supporting the ICOM 7300 now. So it, it's a software defined radio client for ICOM transceivers. And basically, what it does is it allows you to operate your rig from your uh, Mac and you can do that remotely. Uh, it's got integrated FT8 and FT4, so that's pretty neat. 
connect via LAN, Wi-Fi, or internet, local or from somewhere else. So you could be in Timbuktu and log into your uh, your station here at home, and that all sounds great to me. Uh, with memory, I am export and display on waterfall. I have no idea what that means, but sure, it does that too. Looks like you get a cool waterfall on there too, so that's pretty awesome. I, I'd be curious to see how that works with the uh, uh, the 7300 integrated logbook, and you can upload a logbook of the world and QRZ and all that stuff and more. So looks to be a pretty neat bit of software. Runs natively on M1 and M2 Silicon Max. Um, use the app local to remote. So you basically you can sit on your couch and, and work from your shack or anywhere in the world. Dual VFO support, single waterfall, dual watch, uh, logbook with auto logging, UDP log submission. Uh, it's it. I mean, it seems like it's got all the great things. Integrated CW decoder. That's neat. CW uh, keyer, RIDI, uh, HF Wii fax decoder, whatever that is. I mean, it's got all kinds of DX cluster spots, all kinds of stuff. Uh, displays calls on map with heading and distance information. I really like that. Uh, so that's pretty neat. The, here's the caveat, though. No USB cable needed except for the IC7300, which requires a USB. So you would probably have to get some kind of, uh, what is it, VNC? I'm not a computer guy. Uh, to actually, you'd have to have a computer at home and then another computer that you can uh, kind of network into if you have a 7300. So uh, I have never personally said to myself, whether I'm on holiday or I'm sitting in my couch and I want to play radio, gosh, I really wish I could remote into my computer uh, instead of just sitting in the shack. When I travel, I bring a radio with me. I'm primarily a portable guy anyway, so it's not a thing for me to just go outside and set up an antenna. That's just kind of what I do. Um, but if those features entice you, I mean, a hundred bucks, so long as it's not a subscription, I mean, I can't tell you how to spend your money, but a hundred dollars, if it's actually pretty good, uh, seems pretty okay. There is also an iOS version for that that works on uh, iPads and iPhones. You got to spend another 50 bucks for that. So if you want full integration, you're 150 bucks, which is, I, I'm really cheap when it comes to software. So I personally couldn't justify that, but your mileage may vary. That's probably not the greatest answer you're looking for, but that's the answer I've given you. But uh, hey, we get to share it with the world. So thanks for writing in. I appreciate your comment. This last question is, is one of those age-old debates about FT8 and power. This viewer is writing really long email, sorry. Uh, got into discussion with another amateur operator about running high power with data modes. He felt that his good luck using FT8 was due to his practice of running full power on his 100-watt capable radio. Along with that, he explained that FT8 was a low signal mode, not a low power mode. That is very true. It is not a low power mode. Uh, he goes on to say, my contention is that FT8 is a mode that demands a longer power duty cycle and at 100 watts, he's asking the radio to do more work than necessary for successful FT8 operation. Sort of like your car will run from point A to point B at 120, but 60 or 70 will get you there also. See, I prefer to be at like 90 to 100 <laughs> uh, and without the extra stress on the engine or the final amplifiers in the case of the radio. I've not played with FT8 in three years, but when I did had satisfying results at 10, maybe 20 watts. My question is, what is the trend nowadays of folks using FT8 as far as power? My thoughts, lower power is easier on the radio. Lower power is more respectful to other uh, hams because your transmitted signal is not splattering. And low power is just as much fun and productive. So a little bit of yin and yang here, but uh, I have read the manual. And nowhere in the manual for WSJTX does it say anything at all about power. FT8 is a weak signal mode. You can be running 1500 watts with a 20 element beam and the receiving station could, could still hear you really weak. You could still have a weak signal. So it, it, it's propagation, it's not power. Now, good amateur radio practice would tell us to run the lowest amount possible to complete the QSO. Now, here's, here's the great divide. Because yes, you are right. You're gonna be if you're if you're running 100 watts full bore uh, with with that high a duty cycle, it's probably like running your engine at full bore. You're you're probably gonna have lesser of a life uh, out of your radio because you're pushing it to the full limit. 
I usually run my radios even on sideband at 90 watts just to take it easy on the finals because there's literally zero distance. However, I generally run FT8 anywhere between, I, I usually run at 69% power just because 69, but usually about 50 to 70 watts. Uh, if I need to go up, if I'm not making that QSO, I will absolutely uh, turn the power up to 100 watts to make that QSO. Um, <sighs> To constantly run it at 100 watts, I think, is just damaging on your radio. But to answer uh, your questions, what is the trend nowadays of folks using FT8 as far as power? My answer, I have no idea what the trend is. I don't I don't get into discussions with people about how much power are you using. But uh, with the conversations that I've had with my peers and my colleagues, uh, we're kind of all in agreement. Use as much power as you need to make the QSO. Uh, I don't think any of us just practice sitting at 100 watts, but you can. If you have an amplifier and you want to put 1,500 watts into it, knock yourself out. You absolutely can. So yes, low power is easier on the radio. That's without question. The second point, though, uh, where you say low power is more respectful to others because your transmitted signal is not splattering. That is an incorrect statement, and I want to show you why. If we head over to the WSJTX website, over here on the left, we click on where it says WSJTX. Now down here, right here, is where it says documentation. Here's this user guide. I know this is gonna sound foreign to some of you, but you can click on that and it'll tell you all kinds of stuff, how to use this, the instructions basically. Well, if we go down here to menu five, which is transceiver setup, uh, I wanna pay attention specifically to this part right here where it says, click the tune button to switch the radio into transmit mode and generate a steady audio tone. Listen to the generated audio tone using your radio's monitor. Make sure that it is true. Even when you simultaneously use the computer to do other tasks, you don't want any clicks or glitches or anything, okay? Then we want to adjust the power slider on the right-hand side of the window of WSJTX uh, from its maximum until the RF output of your transmitter falls slightly. This is generally a good level for audio drive. And I've talked about this a bunch of times. I've made an entire instructional video on how to do WSJTX that I'll put right there. This is where you get splatter, where people are overdriving. If they're not paying attention to their power meter in WSJTX, if you're not paying attention to your ALC, that's when you're gonna get splatter. It's people uh, who are just forgetting to, or don't know that you're supposed to do that. Um, adjust these settings and then they just start hitting transmit and then they start splattering all over the place. So uh, that has nothing to do with the power output in terms of splattering. That's all how you set it up. Just like people overdriving an amplifier uh, and, and you see their signals eight kilohertz wide on the waterfall on sideband. It's the exact same thing. They're overdriving it. Now, question th or point three you make, lower power is just as much fun. Well, that's subjective. You know, for me, driving very fast is very fun. For my dad, driving 10 miles an hour under the speed limit is probably just as much fun. He drives, you drive slow, dad, I'm sorry. <laughs> so that's very subjective. Now, when I was in Florida, I was, I was using uh, FT8. I was on five watts on 40 meters and like the middle of the night and I'm getting all kinds of DX all over the world with my ICOM 705. So it is very much fun. Is it as productive? Eh, probably not quite as much as if you're, you know, five watts to 50 watts. There's, there's definitely some some uh, some DBs you're gaining there. So, again, that's very subjective. I mean, there's guys that are ride or die QRP. There's other guys that are, you know, QRP is, is uh, there's what is what do they say? There's the life is too short for QRP. So, you know, this is a huge heated debate. I welcome all the comments. I want to see everyone put your thoughts on this subject in the comments and, and share with the community. What are your thoughts? Do you run high power? Do you run you know, 50 watts, what do you, how do you run FT8? I wanna hear about it. So thanks for writing in though. This is a great question. It's one that has been argued uh, since the, the, the inception of FT8 and uh, will probably be argued until we destroy our planet and we're gone as a species. So <laughs> thanks for writing in, I appreciate it. And that's gonna bring us to an end of this week's Mailbag Monday. If you guys have questions, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com, and you just may have your question answered on an episode of Mailbag Monday. If you wanna support the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash k8mrd radio stuff, and you can also follow me on Twitter at k8mrd. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again on another episode of k8mrd radio stuff. 73, guys. Reach for it. <laughs>